what we're trying to do here now is we're simply going to try to jam the signal and we're trying going to try to capture and replay the signal, both of which may be effective at being able to get into this car. To be able to do that, we need a different device. This, this right here, this $20 device is great at receiving, but it cannot transmit to transmit, you, know, you need a device that can transmit. <laughs> and, the, and the cheapest good one is the Hack RF1. And it runs about $320. I'm gonna go switch over to a different piece of software and a different piece of hardware. I've put links below to the software and the devices. So if you wanna use the Amazon links, please note that there are affiliate links. So if you wanna support the channel, you can buy using those links if you like. So what I have here now is a virtual machine of an operating system called Dragon. And it's relatively new. It's specifically designed for SDR. That's all it does. I mean, it can do anything, right? It's a Linux operating system. But the beauty of it is that the developers have built much of the software that you need to do SDR, Software Defined Radio, into a single operating system. I should point out that there's a lot of software in this field. Probably the most commonly used piece of software in the field is SDR Sharp. There's also a universal radio hacker, which is good as well. Of course, in the Linux environment, there's GQRX, which we'll be using here in a little bit. I'm not going to recommend one over the other. They're all free, which is also really nice. <laughs> now what we need to do is we're going to take that and connect our um, SDR device. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a, a piece of software that's built into Dragon OS. And Dragon OS has so much good software in it. Otherwise you'd be spending all your time downloading different pieces of software. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, a piece of software that we can use to be able to, it's Osmocom Sig Gen, signal generator with no GUI. All right, and then just do a dash H. This is going to just show us the help screen on it. Lots of good stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to use it for generating a jamming signal. Now, we have to be close to the car. And Mr. Robot, they're sitting on a step on the street next to the car. They can see the car in the background. So they're really close to the vehicle because one of the things if you're jamming signals is you have to have a stronger signal than the one that's being sent. One of the options also is to go out and purchase your, you know, an amplifier. If you purchase an amplifier, you can send the stronger signals. Most of these inexpensive devices don't send out a very strong signal. If you're really going to jam, you probably want to use an amplifier. The device that they're using in the show, by the way, there is a company who sells those devices and they run ten to fifteen thousand dollars each. Right. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. So there, you know, there's there's a company, a, a kind of an undercover company who sells them online for ten to fifteen thousand dollars each. But essentially what we're doing is doing the same thing, but with your laptop and a three hundred dollar device. Right. So notice here there's a Gaussian output generate Gaussian random output. That's what we're going to be doing. Probably the best analogy is this is like a DOS attack against a radio signal. Basically throwing out random garbage at the signal to block it from ever being received by the receiver. So there's a there's a transmitter, which is the key fob, and it's sending a signal to a receiver in the vehicle. But if something blocks it, it's never going to get to the vehicle. And it could be a physical block, or it can actually be another radio signal blocking it. So it's going to be up arrow, and then uh, we got to tell it what device we're using, dash A. Hack RF is what we're using in this case. What the frequency is, dash F, 315 megahertz. And then we're going to send out a Gaussian signal, which is just a random signal. And then dash X is going to be the bandwidth to EX. What's the Y is the waveform. You can see it here. And we're going to select 10 and verbose. V is for verbose. Keep our fingers crossed and pray to the hacking guards that this works. And we're going to go out and just send out a Gaussian signal to kind to try to be able to jam. So it goes here and says built-in heat sink types using HackRF, supporting sample types, setting up the antenna, set center frequency at 350 megahertz using frequency. Okay, press enter to quit. So it's running right now. 
It set the bandwidth modulation to Gaussian noise. So my hack RF right now is sending out just a bunch of noise to try to block signals. Those of you who are into physical security, I guess it's also cyber security, probably recognize that in some cases, certainly in the U.S. it's true, that when a major political figure is speaking, the security around them jams all signals. So they jam all the signals around a prime minister, a president, what have you. And those devices are for sale, but you can only buy them if you're law enforcement. And it's, I guess you actually can buy them. Yeah, you can buy them, but you can't use them. <laughs> so you can buy them, but you can't use them. It's illegal to use them. I think they're still for sale. Essentially what we've done is we've done what the secret service or whatever the particular security service does around every major political figure when they're speaking in public is they jam the signals around them. Why is that? Well, because, you know, those signals can be used to, say, trigger a bomb. <laughs> as we, we all know that many times these IUDs, as they were used in Afghanistan and Iraq and other places, are triggered by a radio signal. So what they'll do is they'll block all the radio signals in the area of the political figure. So that's essentially what we've just done. We have blocked the radio signals in our immediate vicinity so that none of them can transmit. You know, hopefully it's not blocking my Wi-Fi. <laughs> because wi <laughs> Wi-Fi is a radio signal, right? And one yeah. of the things that we teach in the SDR class is how to block Wi-Fi. You can actually use an SDR device to basically DOS a Wi-Fi connection by simply doing what we're doing right here, except doing it at 2.5 gigahertz, right? So here's what we're doing is, is we're set up next to a vehicle, maybe with an amplifier, and we're sending out a very, hopefully, strong signal that's just a bunch of noise to block the fob from connecting to the car. Now, if the individual doesn't know that the car didn't get locked, they're walking away, they're going into the home, and the car never locked. They push the button, but the car never locked. So now our friends, Romero and Mobley, can walk in and they'll be inside the car. Now, that doesn't mean they're, they're actually going to be able to start it. Although many of these key fobs now have remote start. That is the next step. This is only going to keep them from locking the doors.